Um, okay, there we go. All right, take 15. Your scheduled assessment number three is on Thursday of this week. 75% is our goal, and out of module three is our goal. Some of us are past that, some of us haven't gotten there yet. But just know that's kind of where I want you to be. The further away you are, the more you're going to have to play catch up. Okay? So that's kind of where we are now. First thing, um, does anybody want me to work anything? Um, I'm on volume. Volume, that's what I was going to talk about today. Um, Tia, what you need? I got a little bit of What you need? I didn't write it down, but I had a picture. So I do. Okay, that's fine. I can go on over it again. You need the missing angles. Yeah, you can go over the missing side. Yeah. Okay. What do you need? Is that area or perimeter? We'll do area. Area, and I think you need a perimeter, correct? Okay, look. Okay. The um, engineering mm -hmm. coefficient. Let me see what it looks like. Oh, those will be some solving equations. Okay. All right, what else do we need to see? Is that it? All right, so some of this stuff is in module three, some of this stuff is in module four, but we're going to go over some of this and then we're going to start talking about some more in module three. Um, let me pull up a couple of quick problems. We're at 73%. So as a class, we're right where I want you to be. So individually, you need to make sure that you're right where you want to be. All right, let's look at the missing angle one. Everybody struggles on this one. So let me get just a couple of these to get us started. There's that one. And then let me get a, another one. Um, that one's the same. Let me get another. Crap. That one's the same. Okay. I'm going to do an easy one. I'm going to do a middle one. And then I'm going to do a hard one. And even if you're past this, you need to review this before um, we have the test on Thursday. And let me get one more that's going to be hard. from 180. So this angle is going to be 54. 
And y'all, even if you're not in this module, you need to be paying attention because you're going to have these problems on your test. This will make your pie juicier instantly. So, 54 is going to go right there. And can you see, see my little butterfly? Mm -hmm. Which means this angle is going to be 54. Right. So I jumped inside the triangle to solve the triangle to jump outside the triangle using a butterfly. All right, here's one that's a little bit harder. This time X is on this side, so we start here. We are going to jump inside the triangle. 31. That one's going to be 31 because of my butterfly. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two is to say, hey, I'm inside this triangle. So there's a 31 here and a 41 there, which means I can find this angle. So in my calculator, I'm going to do the 30. One, maybe not because my fingers are fat. 31 plus 41, and then do, no, 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 no. 31 plus 41, and then 180 minus that answer. So my blue angle is going to be 138. That was step number two. My blue angle is now 138. I'm done with this triangle. But I now need to jump out to the other triangle. It's like hopscotch. So if I come down here, I know that this is 138, and I'm trying to find out that. So what must those add up to be? 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus the 138 is going to give me that my purple angle is 42. Now I'm inside the other triangle. Okay. So I have a 42 and a 33. So I now can get this angle. So I'm going to do 180 minus 42 minus 33 or add them up and take it away from 180. So my green angle is going to be 105. So this one's 105. But notice how here, when we got there, they're butterflies. These are not butterflies. These are side by side. So if this is 105, how am I going to find that? If they're side by side, they make a straight line. How many degrees are in a straight line? 180. So I'm going to do 180 minus 105. There's my final angle. That isn't even the hardest one yet. And uh, so anytime, well, whatever side X on, it always starts. So on the other side. side, and it's like you're jumping into a triangle, get that triangle, jump into the next triangle, but you're trying to approach X. So here, X was over here, so we started at the other side. Here, X was on this side, so we started over here. This one by far is probably the hardest only because X is in the middle. So we're going to have to come this way and we're going to have to come this way. So for that first problem, X was all the way on the left. Here, X was all the way on the right. Here, X is kind of in the middle. Do it, do it, make it. No, I didn't see how you work here. So if I have this angle and I jump into the triangle, that's going to be 36. So that's step number one. I am inside this triangle. So step number two is to realize I'm in that triangle with a 36 and a 40. So I can get this angle. Somebody with a calculator. 180 minus 40 minus 36? 104? So now, step number three, I'm going to come down here and try to figure out this angle. So it's going to be 104 here, and you know those add up to 180, so my purple is going to be 76. So now, I'm in this triangle. 
Well, do you see that I've gooched up all the way up the X on this side? No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so, I've gone as far as I could this way. I can't get any closer to X. So now i got to come in from the other side because my blue triangle, my blue triangle has an X and a 76. I need this angle, which means i got to come here. If I have a 108 here, what is this one going to be? 72. 72. So I have this purple 76, a red 72. So now to get my final answer, I'm going to do the 76 plus the 72 and then 180 minus that answer. Finally, there's my final answer, 32. So I scooched in from one side, then I scooched in from the other side. But your goal is to get inside the triangle to use the triangle rule to jump over to the next triangle. I know you don't like it. No, why X? So X is this angle right here. Because mathematicians are paid lots of money okay. to confuse you. Okay. And it's working. Alright, so that is going to be the angle problem. So I can take that off the plate. Now, let me do solving equations real fast because that one's a fun one. And for all of y'all, even if you haven't gotten into module four, Solving equations is module four stuff, but it's fun stuff, and all I gotta do is just a little bit of review, mm -hmm. and y'all can juicy up your pie in a hurry. Remember in high school, you had problems. Like, what? So if it's like that, mm -hmm. that two going, you're gonna subtract the two on both sides, and you're gonna divide it. Perfect. So, I know there's only one or two people in this room who's in Module 4, so everybody needs to be listening because you can make your pie juicy by getting some of these problems right on your test. These are called solving equations. Solving equations means that they want you to get Y by itself. They want to know what does Y equal when you're going, oh, Ms. Cooper, really? I know 3 plus 2 equals 5, so why am I even doing this problem? They're going to get hard in a heartbeat. So you need to understand the process. So, this is like the county line. That's the equal sign. So when you in your hood, over here, it is what it is. If you're in your hood over here, it is what it is. But if you cross that line, you're going to do the opposite. So if you're a positive person in your hood, you go to somebody else's hood, you're going to be bad. If you're bad in your hood, you go to somebody else's hood, you're going to be good. So anytime you cross that equal sign, you're going to do the opposite of what you would do in your neighbor, neighborhood. Okay? So, I need Y to be by, this is you. I need you to be by yourself. So, you, Gucci plus Keisha. <laughs> she wants to be by himself. So do you agree he's got to re uh, get rid of Keisha? Yeah, that's a prank. They held to get, they're not married yet. That's tonight, <laughs> 10 o'clock on BET. <laughs> they held together by addition. They're dating, Sue's Gucci and. They're not married, they're dating. Okay, so the way that you get rid of a plus Keisha is you gonna subtract Keisha. So we subtract Keisha from both sides. So the positive two and the negative two go away. If I have two dollars and I take away two dollars, I'm broke. Y'all, we don't walk around saying, I'm Gucci with nobody. We just say, I'm Gucci. We keep the broke part on the down low. Y'all with me? So. This is going to give me this side. 5 minus 2 is going to give me 3. You're so silly. You're going to remember it. <laughs> All right. On the other side, here's my county line. So we have Y minus 3 on the front. Our goal is to get Y by itself. Plus the 3. So the opposite of subtracting, Keisha, 
is adding. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. And what you do to both sides is who you're trying to move. Because a negative 3 and a positive 3 cancel. I owe you $3. I gave you $3. We good. We Gucci. So on the front, we have y equals. On the back, we have 10. And the good news is you can check these, y'all. The problem was y plus 2 equals 5. If I take that 3 and I plug it in, what is 3 plus 2? So I know without a doubt I got this problem right. Here, y minus 3 equals 7. If I take my answer and plug it in, 10 minus 3 is 7. I know I have this problem right. I don't have to ask anybody. So, if it's held together by addition, you subtract. If it's held together by subtraction, you multiply. Let's look at this one. Gucci and Keisha are all up on each other. So, we're going to divide. So, if you together with nothing between you, you better be married. So, if there's nothing between them, that's married. Multiplication. Multiplication is married. So, these two are held together by marriage. So what's the opposite of marriage? Divorce. Divorce. So the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So we are going to divide both sides by 6. So y is going to equal 3. Our check, the original problem is 6 times y equal 18. To check it, does 6 times 3 equal 18? Yes, I know that for without a doubt, that's my answer. Now, for this one, how are they held together? Division. So how are we going to get rid of them? So we going to multiply both sides by 5. So what is y going to equal? Yay. We good? So those are the four basic principles. Whenever you go to somebody else's hood, whether you're going from the back to the front, the front to the back, it doesn't matter, you do the opposite. Okay? So when I throw in negative numbers, you're still going to do the same thing. So if I have negative 15 equals x minus 3, my goal is to get x by itself. Gucci's just standing on the back. So I want to get x alone. So who am I moving? The 3. The 3. How is it held on? How is the x and the 3 together? Subtract. x subtract 3. So how am I going to move it? Add. I'm going to add 3. So when I go to my calculator, I'm going to type in negative 15 plus 3. There's my negative button right here. That gives me a negative 12. Cool? So they're going to start off easy, and then they're going to progressively get harder. So now, just like with life, watch this. Subtract the 5. Now, my goal is to get x by itself. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. Is it solve for x? Get this, x alone. This is a two-step Oh, you're having high school flashbacks. This is a two-step equation. Now, here's where I have everybody struggle. Miss Cooper, I know i got to get the x by itself, but do I move the 2 first or does I move the 5 first? The 5. Does it matter? No. Yes. Yes, it do matter. Good. Okay, let's look at it in Miss Cooper's warped mind. You ready for my warped mind? Mm -hmm. Do you see a married couple mm -hmm. yes. with a single friend? Yes. Mm-hmm. So here is a married couple with a single friend on the side. These are married, plus a little something, something on the side. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So if my goal is to get X by itself, I have to decide, do I get rid of my spouse, or do I get rid of the single something, something? And I have people say, well, it's according to how happily married you are. <laughs> You always get rid of the sidekick because when you go to divorce court, you don't want any witnesses. 
So we always have to get rid of the single lady, the single number, before we can get divorced. So what's the, we got to get rid of him first. What's the opposite of adding five? So here's my county line. I'm subtracting five, which is getting rid of my single lady. So on the front, I have the two and the X. And on the back, what's 21 minus 5? 16. So do you see that I got rid of that little hussy right there? And now I'm left with the married couple. So when I go to divorce court, I don't have no witnesses. So we are held together by multiplication. So I'm going to divide. So my answer is going to be 8. Always get rid of Hussie first. Amen. Y'all would have still been married. You wouldn't be asking me to get you a loan. Now, if they get a little bit harder, let me show you this one. Um, don't write it down yet because I may. So this is the description. This is going into the description, so it's going to be 2x plus... Oh, my God, throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That was what I was Plus six, plus x equals... <laughs> okay, let's try this one. It says solve for x. Now, this one must be from Texas because they got lots of x's. So what we got to do is we got to get all those x's together. But Ray said that we need to distribute, which is going to bring the parentheses down. So, distributed property means you're going to multiply the outside time, like distributing drugs. You hand it out to everybody in the room. So, 2 times x and 2 times 3. Now, the x does not have a number in front of it, so it's understood to be a 1. You don't walk around saying, I own one house. You say, I own a house. So, what is 2 times x, or 2 times 1x? 2x. 2x. And 2 times 3 is? 6. And these are like choo-choo trains. They have to be held together. So, because that was a positive 6, we put a plus. Now, I bring this down. That's not part of the drug house. See how he's in the backyard? Mm -hmm. This was the drug house. 2 times x, 2 times 3. Now, I'm not done because do you see that these are X's and these are X's? So this will be like terms for me. 2X rays plus 1X ray is 3X three 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 X rays. Plus 6. See? Okay. It's coming back. Are you with me when I got to here? Yeah. Okay. This is a married couple. Right. This is a single lady. Right. This is technically a married couple because there's a one there. Because if you own, like if you own two cars, we'll say, oh, I own two cars. But if you own one car, we usually don't say the one. We just say we own a car. Right. So there's a one there. So do you agree both of these are married couples? Right. I can put married couples with married couples. I can put single people with single people. I just can't mix them. So two x-rays plus one x-ray gave me the three x-rays. So now, now we're down to a married couple with the hussy. So what we need to do? Subtract the six. We need to subtract the six. That will get rid of the oh. We need to subtract the six. That gets rid of the single lady. So 3x, I still screwed up the problem, equals, equals 10. 10. They're married. Divided by. So I'm going to divide by 3. So my answer is going to be 10 thirds, or if they want a decimal, or if they want a big summer. Aren't these fun? Yeah, I like those. I like those. That's module four. Yeah, I like module four. So I did that a lot in high school. They'll tell you whether they want a mixed number, a fraction, or a decimal. Yeah. We good? So, okay. Now, um, a couple that I saw today, I had somebody that called me around that saw this. Um, and they were like reading how to do it in Alex and 45 steps later, they're still getting it wrong. Okay, remember just a second ago, y'all did not bat an eye when we did this problem right here. Mm -hmm. How are they held together? This problem over here, how are they held together? 
Multiplication. So how do I get rid of them? Division. So Division. I'm going to divide both sides by? Five. Six. So my answer is going to be six. Okay. This is the same problem. Here, you were married to a simple five. So you divorced a simple five. Here, you are married to a bipolar person. A crazy fraction. So the opposite of being married to a crazy fraction is what? Divorcing the crazy fraction. So the opposite of being married to a crazy thing is divorcing that crazy thing. So when I type this into my calculator, it's going to be one-fifth divided by two-thirds. So when I type it in, it's going to be parentheses 1 over 5 divided by parentheses 2 over 3. And if they tell me they want a fraction, whoop, there it is. Are we feeling better about it? Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> let me do one more. Look, I got into an equation thing. Um, let me get back to volume. Y'all, volume, for those of you who haven't gotten to it yet, you should be juicing up your pie with volume. Volume is super easy. Volume, let me pull up my formula sheet. Volume, you have the formulas right there for you. All you have to do is plug and chug. You pick a formula, you plug it in. Where's my stinking formula sheet? Right there. So I go to the back side. I'm going to pull this up. Those are my formulas for volume. We've already talked about perimeter has what kind of units? Perimeter. Just plain, just normal. Inches, feet, yards, miles, whatever. Then we went to area. Area has inches squared, feet squared, yards squared. Now we're getting into volume. Volume is going to have inches cubed, feet cubed, yards cubed. Okay? So, when I do the volume problem, I first have to know what these stinking shapes are. A rectangular solid or a rectangular prism is like a box. Like a bread box. A circular cylinder is like a can. A sphere, when you're in history class, they talk about the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. A sphere is a ball, like the earth. And a cone can be either an ice cream cone or it can be a dunce hat. So those are the shapes we need to know. Now, when you're using your formula sheet, do not use those two formulas. The capital B will get you in trouble. Use the formulas that are up close and personal. Okay? So, it's, yes. So let me just, I want this this bottom middle piece right here. Alright, so don't use B. Don't use the capital B. Use the formulas that are up close and personal. So, for that first one, what shape do you see? Right, so a rectangular prism. So the formula is length times width times height. So 2 centimeters times 3 centimeters times 6 centimeters. Which is 36 centimeters cubed because we're doing volume. Cool? Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't matter whether you call it... So if it's sitting this way, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 6. If it's sitting this way, this is 2, this is 3, and this is 6. I didn't change the volume. It still has the same guts in it. So it doesn't matter when you're doing that which one you call length, width, and height. Now, for this one, what shape is that? That's a circular cylinder. That's a circular cylinder. We don't use this one. We use the V equals pi R squared H. We know what pi is. What does pi mean? 3.14. Radius is halfway through a circle. So the first thing we have to do is identify the circle and the radius is halfway through. They told us 17 is all the way through. 
So 17 is my diameter. My radius is going to be 17 cut in half. So 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. So my radius is going to be 8.5. And my height is how tall it is. My height is 51. I plug it into my calculator. 3.14 times 8.5 squared, because that's what the formula says, times 51. There's your